Hello children, welcome you all back to your science class. I hope everybody is safe. And uh, I appreciate the children who have completed your homework on time and posting it in time. Children, today's health benefit is about turmeric. Turmeric is considered to be auspicious in Indian household and uh, it is also used in traditional medicine system in India. So this turmeric helps us to prevent cancer, it improves digestion and uh, it even boosts immune system and is also helpful in to promote weight loss and uh, skin health and it also helps to control diabetes and much more. So it is a common item which you found in your household. So let us use it wisely and get benefited by it. Children, I believe everybody have gone through your previous videos about the chapter crop protection and management. And uh, I also hope that you all finished your assignments. Now move into the crop protection lesson last part. Children, in the last class we have seen about various agriculture practices like preparation of a soil, sowing of a seed, manuring, irrigation and adding of pesticides and types of pesticides is also we have seen in the last classes. So, now we are going to see another agriculture practice, it is harvesting. Harvesting is a practice which is done by the farmer when the crops are ready for Harvesting that is the crop is uh, becoming matured when the crop become mature the farmer is ready to do harvesting in definition Harvesting is called the process of cutting and gathering of a uh, crops So farmer will do harvest either manually or he may use some machines which is available in the market So let's see what are the types of harvesting that the farmer do in the next picture Harvesting of a cereal crop is either done manually with the help of a sickle or even in regional it is called as kurpi or with the help of a machine you call it as harvester. In this picture you can see the various techniques of harvesting. In the first picture the, there is a machine which is held for harvesting and uh, there are many kind of machines are also there you can see in the picture very well. And uh, there is a disadvantage of using a machine that is if you want to use a machine the farmer should have a very large area of cultivation. So the farmer with uh, less area of cultivation cannot use the combined harvester or a harvesting machines which is given in the picture. So he has to go for a manual harvesting. So in manual harvesting you can see the instrument which has been used for it. So he has to hire a labor and do, he has to do the manual harvesting. Manual harvesting is a time consuming. That is the big disadvantages of manual harvesting. When you uh, look into the time consuming of manual and the machine harvesting, there is a big uh, variation is seen. So for if your farmer is going to do with the manual, he has to require two days or even a full whole day to complete its field. If it is done by the machine, within a few hours, the whole uh, crop field will be harvested. So, threshing is the process which is followed by harvesting. So, after the farmer has harvested the field, he will bundle the crops and it is ready for threshing. Threshing is the process of removal of grain from the plant. Here you can see there is a chaff on the grain. So the grain will be removed from the chaff. Chaff is just the outer covering of a grain. So it is done by few actions. Like you can also see like a rubbing action, impact action or stripping action. Stripping action you would have seen in the home like how it is done by hand. It is kind of a hand picking method. Sometimes it is also done by uh, animals and machines are also used in the process of 
So in the next picture you can see what are the types. Here in this picture you can see different methods of threshing. In the first picture you can see the women are bundling the crops and hitting it on the hard surface. When the, they do this the grains are get separated from the chaff. Okay, and they will be collecting the grains and uh, stored in a heap. The second picture you can see they were uh, using animals to do threshing. So as animals uh, walk on the crops, so the heavier grains get separated from that. And third picture you can see the mission which is used for threshing purposes. So when you compare these two with the third picture, the third picture is time consuming and you can also see that the hay is how they are getting bundled up in the machines. So it is less time consuming work. Threshing process is followed by winnowing. Winnowing is actually a separation technique. Here a heavier particles and the lighter chaff has been removed by process of winnowing. Here there is a medium of air which plays a very big role in in this process so components of a mixture are separated by wind or by blowing air is called winnowing so you can see in the picture how the wind helps to separate a grain from the shaft and the next picture also you can see depending upon the uh, weight of the uh, grain and the shaft it gets separated by the wind it is a common method used by farmers. They stand on the raised platform and allow the threshed foot grains to fall slowly on the ground. And the wind carries away the lighter particles and helps the farmer to separate the grains. Harvested grains need to be stored before they are made available for consumption. To prevent the spoilage, it is necessary to ensure that both the grains and the storage area are free from moisture. The grains are dried in the sun to remove as much moisture as possible. They are then weighed and packed in the gunny bags or bins. Bulk storage of grain is done in granaries or silos. So in this picture you can see how the grains are being dried in the sun and the next picture shows the picture of ganneries and the silos are long uh, a large kind of a storage system which is used by the farmers who as you are cultivating in a large scale here we have seen about storage how the farmer has to store his crops and sorry it's grains and all we have seen so the storage area should be kept clean and dry the pesticide should be sprayed before and the periodic inspection should, uh, should be done by the farmer to check whether the crops are stored prop the grains are stored properly or not so though he is doing all those works but he has some idea to improve his crop that is he wanted to increase a crop yield to increase a crop yield what the farmer has to do so, though he follows all the agriculture practices in a proper way, but uh, he cannot have a uh, yield properly. So, what he has to do? Some innovation should be done to increase the crop yield. So, one such kind of innovation is called mixed cropping. It also called as mixed cultivation. In this type of cultivation, two or more different types of crops are sown in a particular field at the same time. The crops chosen are such that, that the nutrient needs of one crop are fulfilled by the other. For example, a leguminous plant, that is a plant having a seed in long pots, you would have seen in peas and all those things, that is called leguminous plant, so, can be grown in the same field along with the cereal such as wheat. So, when a farmer is doing such things, so in a one field, he is going to uh, mix two crops and he is going to grow in it. When he is growing of two or more crops simultaneously on a same piece of a land, this process is called multiple cropping or multiple cultivation. Okay. 
so it uh, improves in the fertility of the soil that is the main thing when the, this kind of a thing is done by the farmer the, we also know that leguminous plants helps to refill the nitrogen content in the soil so it obviously increase the fertility of the soil and hence increase in the crop yield because the two crops are properly chosen and the product and uh, refuse from the uncropped can be held help in the growth of the other crop plant like a decaying matter they act as a manure and it can be helpful for the crop to grow and for the to also increase the fertility of the soil so it is kind of a insurance against a crop failure due to abnormal weather conditions mixed cropping helps the farmer in lot and it also uh, advised by the um, big scholars like whoever is working on a research scholars who are working on agriculture field they advise such kind of a mixed cropping they gave them a best result so even now the farmers were advised to do mixed cropping so in this picture you can see what are the successful mixed cropping practice can be done that is in you know, one field the farmer is going to grow two different types of crops one can be a leguminous crop one can be a cereal so here when along with the soya bean crop you can go a pea a leguminous plant or a maize plus black gram groundnut and sunflower wheat and a chickpea so when the farmer is going to cultivate two different types of crop at one time it is going to be benefit for the farmer and it also help in another and by improving the solid soil fertility of the soil so it is uh, it is actually a very good idea for a farmer to improve his crop cultivation another innovative method to increase the crop yield is a uh, crop rotation so what is crop rotation that is a very big question the practice of growing two or more dissimilar crop in the same field one after the other is called crop rotation okay so first uh, for six months they will be sowing a wheat the next six month they won't be sowing wheat they will choose another type of crop maybe a sunflower maybe a, a root vegetable or something like that next six month they will change another crop so the same kind of crop they are not going to cultivate in the same field they are going to keep on changing the crop okay, why this crop rotation is needed Growing the same crop in the same site year after year reduces the soil fertility to and can increase the building up of pest, disease and weeds in the soil. So because of these reasons they are not able to grow the same kind of a crop in the same field for many years. So when crop rotation is done it also helps a variety of natural predators of pests to survive on the farm. by providing diverse habits and source of food for them crop rotation generally involves same combinations of three types of crops so you can see the type of crops which can be sown like a small row crops what they can be sown and a type of small grain is given and the type of forage crops so all these are the types of crops which can be uh grown in a crop rotation process now what are the main benefits of the crop rotation aids in the control of disease and insects reducing pesticide application we have seen about pesticide how the farmers are spending a lot on pesticides we have seen in the previous classes so on doing this crop rotation they have a chance of reducing the pesticides application and it also helps the control of weeds we have also seen what is weeds weeds are undesirable crops which is grown in between the cultivated crops so uh, it helps to control the weed also okay some crops supply nitrogen reducing fertilizers applications like growing a leguminous crop which has a rhizobium bacteria in it can helps to uh, helps the soil in fertility by supplying nitrogen to them so when the soil becomes a nitrogen content so the farmer need not have wanted to apply a fertilizers there so it is helpful for the farmer and it is improves the soil organic matters again and tilt with a higher crop yield so because of these reasons crop rotation is again the success for the crop 
the farmers to uh, have a better yield so in this picture you can see the simple system that works for the crop rotation so the first year uh, the farmer may go for a legume kind of a plant the next part he can go for the root vegetables like he can sow like arga onion garnia garlic turnips beetroot carrot and those kind of a thing then he can come for next instead of uh, after uh, getting cultivated by these crop from these crop now he can come for a uh, fruit kind of a thing tomatoes cucumbers peppers all those things then again if and go for a leaf kind of vegetables like lettuce greens you can cultivate these kind of crops so when a farmer can able to choose four different varieties of a crops for cultivation in a different period of a time so the soil fertility is maintained and the growth of weeds are also minimized and the since the minimize uh, weeds are getting minimized there is no need of applying pesticides and is the soil fertile the soil becomes fertile in nature there is no need of adding fertilizers also so this becomes a profit for a farmer instead of spending money in a fertilizers and manure and for uh, weed sites he is able to uh, able to uh, provide profit for his own by choosing a crop rotation process so in crop rotation process the farmer is going to grow dissimilar crops in the same field year after year after year so this is done keeping in mind the nutrient requirements of the particular crop apart from agriculture practices there is also many practices which is helpful for the farmers and which also provide profit for them like animal husbandry which includes cattle farming poultry farming uh, inland fishing bee keeping fish production and all those things so what do this animal husbandry involves with it involves with feeding of animals shelter for animals and it also care of animal and breeding of animals so what does in definition you call this animal husbandry yes it is nothing but rearing animal on a large scale for food and for other needs it's called animal husbandry so we know from the picture you can see animal gives a food products like meat so from goat and buffaloes and cows we can get meat milk products we can get curd like curd cheese butter and all those things so from hen we can get chicken egg and all those and the fish from uh, marine life we can get a fish and fish sauce and all those things so these are the products which we get from animals so apart from rearing a animal we also get the these products also so such kind of a thing you call it as animal husbandry so it is nothing but a rearing animal on a large scale for a food and other needs it's called animal husbandry in this picture you can see two different types of animal husbandry one is pisciculture which means rearing of fish and the next one is apiculture which means the practice of rearing any bees for honey and other products by products of any like bee wax and such things okay so these health these two products are actually a profitable one for the farmers so children with this your lesson got over i hope you all understood this lesson better children in the next uh, picture you have a home assignment which has a 15 fill up questions and the next you will have 15 true or false it's all objective questions children it is easy for you to answer also uh, complete this home assignment in time and post the pictures also in time thank you